Hmm. Hi, I'm Dan um, from All Forgotten, and I asked you guys to do a Q and A session. And I've got so many questions here. Uh, I haven't really read through them yet, so I'm just gonna kind of just gonna kind of hit them off one after the other. Okay. So, Dan, can you explain to everyone how you warm your vocals? Yes, I can. Um, I'm really lazy. I don't do it a lot. Um, I don't do it anywhere near as much as I should do. If I'm honest, I only really warm my vocals when I'm feeling a bit rough. Um, but what I usually do is just whack on uh, some of the stuff from Alyssa Cross. So just do kind of vowel sounds and everything like that. And um, make sure I'm drinking lots of hot water and things like that. And steaming usually helps if you're feeling really, really rough. Um, I used to do a lot of harmony stuff. Um, and if you're doing a lot of that in your band, then it's always a good idea to just, you know, make sure you're warming up with the person that you're harmonising a lot with. It's probably a wicked idea, um, just so you know how you're both standing for the show. But we've all forgotten. Um, yeah, just generally we all warm up just by, I don't know really, just having a bit of a jump around and I sing just parts of the songs that aren't too difficult so I don't blow my voice the moment I walk on stage. Okay. What has been the best gig you've attended? Um, I can't speak for the whole band, so the whole this whole Q and A is just really me. But obviously, I can answer on behalf of some of us. But the best gig I've attended recently, um, a gig by a band called Ingratitude. They're probably like one of my favourite live bands, and that was just at a really shitty little club somewhere in I can't remember. I think it might be Manchester or something like that. So good, Ingratitude. Go check them out. Total plug, but fuck it, they're awesome. What band or musician has the biggest influence on your life? Everything. Michael Jackson, Justin Timberlake, uh, Emma Rosa, Chiodo, Sassin, Paramore, everyone you can think of. Literally, like, I'm big on lots of different lots of different styles. Like, I really like old swing music as well. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I really like that I don't listen to as much of it as I would like to. Um, like Frank Sinatra, kind of Rat Pack style stuff I'd like to have more time to listen to it but just with all forgotten and obviously like all the styles that we do it doesn't really come into it that much you don't really have the time to listen to the musicians that really have had a huge influence in your life but when I was writing Deadweight I listened to a lot of Michael Jackson and Justin Timberlake is absolutely sick as well so they're big influences on me uh, I've condensed a few of these questions so like when are you guys coming back to Portsmouth, Cardiff, Germany, Southampton, European shows? Okay, I love you guys a lot, I really do, but stop asking these questions. I'm joking, no, you can ask whatever you want, but anything like this, go on our MySpace or even better, um, I think just above this video, if you click on one of the little tabs on our Facebook, there's one that says band page, that's basically all you need to know about All Forgotten on the internet, everything will be there bar Twitter and if you if you're down with that you go and have a look at that as well. But all our dates will be up there. European shows, please keep your fingers crossed and we will as well for next year. Um I can pretty much guarantee we'll be coming out at some point. Okay. Are we still doing the old all forgotten songs at shows or completely new material? I don't want to tell everyone what the set list is exactly unless you've already seen this before you guys kinda of know. It's a mix. So we've got some old songs in there and lots of new stuff of course we're not gonna you know linger too much in the past we've got a lot to do at the minute we're writing a lot of material and you guys are going to hear a lot of that i know um same with a lot of bands um that we're friends with um you know people like deaf havana uh, especially who have had to change their sound you know recently we're kind of in the process of doing a similar thing i know not everyone's going to get it and that's cool, you're more than entitled to your opinion, and, you know, I've got absolutely no problems if you preferred the old AF, like, that's cool, but we're just, you know, moving forward and striving on, we're getting older and listening to new music, and that's always going to change, so I hope you guys are going to dig the new stuff, but yeah, there's going to be a, a, a lot of the new stuff in the set. Favourite show ever played in a band? In any band? Um... I loved all the bands I've ever been in, as any musician will say, unless you've had a really bad experience. Um, but a favourite show for me, I, I guess, has got to be this year, um, Yumi at Six and Sonosphere. Great vibes. Sonosphere was absolutely sick. Got to hang out with just the best people you can think of for the whole weekend, and Yumi at Six was absolutely sick. Uh, I loved playing to audiences that 
are really willing to go for it, and that was absolutely incredible. Favourite band played with? I can't comment yet, because I think the favourite bands that we're playing with are me coming up. I mean, like, I'm so stoked to play with Emma and I'm so stoked to play with the Kings and Versa Emerge. Um, absolutely amazing. For me, I guess so far, it would probably have to be Yumi at Six. They were so good. Hands down, one of the best live bands I've seen. Um, so, yeah. Okay, Ken I questions. I knew it would happen, so I'm going to have to say them. What happened with Ken I? Why'd they break up so soon after releasing an album? Would All Forgotten ever play any Ken I songs? Okay, let's get this issue done. Absolutely done and dusted. What happened with Ken I? Um, everyone in the band is just kind of winding down. We'd done four years of really hard fucking work, like really hard work, and and things just hadn't gone the way that we'd hoped. We released an album. I'm really glad that some people out there really liked it. Uh, you know, it got some really whacking, you know, cool reviews, and other people just said it was you know, a mediocre record. I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of the boys that I was in that band with. They'll be uh, some of my best friends, you know, to the grave. But it's one of those things, you know, you're in an old band, um, you, everyone moves on to new di on new different things, those guys did, um, I did, and I saw the opportunity, we've all forgotten, um, and I took it, just because, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity, I, I really enjoy being in the band, and, you know, I wasn't sold from the moment, it's not like I just jumped ship, you know, I went and I met all the guys in All Forgotten, it was really the personalities that won me over, um, and I didn't base it all just on the music, because it's not being in a band, if you guys you know, know or know anyone that isn't a band, it's really not just about that, and would All Forgotten ever play any Can I songs, no, don't be retarded, like, and I don't think Can I are going to play any Can I songs again either, so anyone hoping for a reunion show, I don't think it's going to happen, unless, you know, God forbid one of us gets really sick, and it's the last time I'm ever going to get to see that guy again, <laughs> which touch wood, that never happens, but um, I don't think, you know, there's anything on the horizon for Ken I, but, you know, if you really, if you dig my old stuff in my old band, then that's awesome, but I'm all about All Forgotten now, and it's time to move on. Are there any guitar tabs for Deadweight? No, but it doesn't mean to necessarily say that we can't put some up. Um, if there's enough demand for it, if you guys want, you know, a tab book, I think we can release something on like iTunes for, like, you know, like a pound or something, and you get it all with the track. We might... We might add it on a future release or just get um, Steve or one of the guys in the band to, to whack it up, you know, see what will happen. Um, when you hit writer's block, how do you cure it? You don't. You don't. Not at least, not for me. I mean, I know a lot of guys out there do it. I mean, like, there's certainly different ways to try and do that, but it just doesn't for me. When you ain't feeling creative, you're not feeling creative, you should get down and do all the menial crap that comes with being in a band like making sure that you know you're just really looking after yourself and trying to keep yourself in the best state you know you possibly can to to, to you know have music come into you I guess um, but at the end of the day if you can't write you can't write when it comes back you know it you know you literally know when you've written a good song and also as well if you try and write a song with bad, with bad writer's block it always comes out rubbish so you can always tell what's the best food I've had on tour um Fresh Wiener Schnitzel in Austria, absolutely incredible. Um, Germany does some amazing food. Don't let anyone tell you any different. What's the craziest thing you guys have seen on stage or anywhere else? I've seen some crazy stuff. Um, I know the other boys have as well. Like not so much all forgotten gigs, other people's gigs, and just gigs where you just you know like <laughs> band members fly kicked in the face. I mean, uh, Sonosphere was pretty awesome. Um, Jonas climbing all the way to the top of the um, the Sonosphere stage, that was pretty rad. If any of you guys were at Sony this year and you saw Ramstein, that's surely got to be one of the craziest things you guys have seen. Literally, I was off my face and loving that. Um, apart from that, well, what's the craziest thing you guys have seen? You know, like, message back in this uh, in this video on the comments. What's it like being in a band and having fans singing your songs back to you at shows? Sick. Absolutely sick. Can't beat it. It's like a drug. Let's turn my back into the sun